carrying precious cargo now. You can't just wander aimlessly around like you've been... What? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for Patrick Starr's least likable moments. Keep an eye out for some minor spoilers. Now what is it, Patrick? You will never guess what happened to me today. You got your license? Yeah! Number 20, being a disruptive student at SpongeBob's expense. When SpongeBob decides to bring Patrick along for a day in the life of a boating school student, it quickly goes south for him. Saying that Patrick is an unruly classmate is like pointing out that the sky is blue. Why are they laughing? I guess it's just in the timing. Oh. <laughs> he doesn't even care about how much doing well in school means to our yellow sponge. He not only disrupts class with his use of spitballs, he also creates a deeply offensive drawing of Mrs. Puff, which he lets SpongeBob get blamed for. When you are turning, it is important to signal at least <gasps> feet from the Big turn. fat meanie! Patrick, you can't do that! She's the teacher! He ultimately frustrates his friend to the point that they have a sort of brawl during recess that lands them both in detention. Nice going, Patrick. I hate you no matter what. Yeah, well, I'd hate you even if I didn't hate you. I'd hate you even if that made sense. Number 19, popping the world's oldest bubble. SpongeBob, Patrick, and company head to the Kingdom of Atlantis in Atlantis Square Pantis, but their trip takes an unexpected turn. When they're shown what's said to be the oldest bubble in existence, Patrick pops it without hesitation when he takes a photo. This is the real deal. <laughs> That's bad enough on its own, but to add insult to injury, you can't even call the pink starfish's actions accidental. Earlier in the story, he destroyed the prop version of the bubble with the snap of a camera. In other words, he essentially learned nothing from that prior experience. That's not exactly surprising, but still, destroying ancient artifacts really isn't cool. The <laughs> Number 18, bragging about his license to SpongeBob. Sometimes, friends tease each other, but nobody likes a bragger. While fans know SpongeBob has had a difficult time securing a driver's license, Patrick ends up getting one and driven to tears. I passed my test! You got a perfect score? Yeah! I thought you said it was hard. Perfect score? And that accomplishment is one he continually boasts about, to the point that it just gets plain mean. I'm not saying you can't be proud of yourself, but you shouldn't rub it in people's faces, especially when you know it can hurt them. Thanks for the ride, Patrick. No problem, buddy. You can't help being a pedestrian. <sighs> While the sea star goes on about how fun driving is, it isn't long until he starts to act reckless. Driving may be fun, but it's also a huge responsibility, Patrick. I don't have the boatmobile anymore. Why? It stopped working, so I threw it away. The needle was on E. Well, I figured that must mean end. Oh. Number 17, going on a karate rampage. Unfortunately, Patrick is definitely one with himself during Karate Star. The episode finds him learning karate from SpongeBob, and once he starts to gain a couple of moves under his belt, mainly the chop, he starts to go rogue. Hey, look, it's Patrick! Hey, SpongeBob! What are you doing? Hey. <laughs> Things get so bad that Patrick loses control of his entire arm. He even becomes known as the Mad Chopper, performing his signature move on nearly everything in sight. There's a Mad Chopper on the loose! Mad Chopper? Patrick. We need the cops, kid! Cops? No, that won't be necessary. I'll handle this, citizen. Soon, pretty much all of Bikini Bottom falls victim to his wild chopping spree. Needless to say, this is not a side of Patrick we want to see more of. This just in. A madman is chopping everything. Not the giant screen TVs! Oh no! Always make sure to practice karate safely, and never let too much power go to your head. Number 16, eating Squibbert's tickets. You should never eat anything that doesn't belong to you. That goes for food, but it also goes for concert tickets, as shown in Smooth Jazz at Bikini Bottom. When Squidward's ticket to a concert gets close enough to Patrick's mouth, the starfish goes to town. You're probably not gonna get that back before showtime. Don't bother trying to explain to him that it's not food. We're guessing it'd be useless. At least Squidward gets another chance to attend the event when SpongeBob wins the tickets. But Patrick doesn't stop there. He goes to the actual concert and also eats both SpongeBob and Squidward's backstage passes. <laughs> Tell me what more. Squidward isn't always likable, but you can't help but sympathize with him in this situation. Patrick really should learn to control himself. <laughs> I <can't survive. laughs> hey, come back here with those backstage passes! Number 15, hunting SpongeBob. 
SpongeBob and Patrick may be close friends, but in Nature Pants, that friendship is put to the test. Are, 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 are you sure you want to give me this mayonnaise? It's all yours. Bad <laughs> these old phone books? All yours, old friend. When SpongeBob starts living amongst the jellyfish, Patrick pleads for him to return, to no avail. While it's a touching moment that shows how much the starfish misses his best pal, things take a pretty weird turn later. Instead of just being there for his friend, Patrick decides to hunt him. If I can't have you as a friend, I'm gonna make you a trophy! I even picked out this nice jar for you! And he doesn't go easy either, really putting SpongeBob through the ringer during his attempts to capture him. We don't know what exactly the starfish was thinking, but his behavior is disturbing to say the least. I got you now, SpongeBob! <laughs> Number 14, being a deadbeat dad. Ever wondered what it'd be like if Patrick became a father? Well, that kind of happens in Rockabye Bivel, and unfortunately, he isn't a very good dad. Instead of nurturing the baby scallop, Dub Jr., that he and SpongeBob take in, he ignores it in favor of watching TV after work. Patrick, what about my break? Oh yeah, your break. Uh, tomorrow, I promise. In case you were wondering, his job is also watching TV. Hey, you want to be a couch potato? Sure, that's fine. So, this is work? But you can't do that all the time when you have a scallop and partner depending on you. You haven't been helping at all with Junior. We made a commitment and you're not doing your share. You never do anything. I changed his diaper. Yeah, once. Patrick has been lazy before, but seeing how negligent he is in this situation is pretty disheartening. We just hate to see it. Ooh. So this is the thanks I get for working overtime. Number 13, destroying the Krusty Krab. When Patrick is unable to pay his bill while dining in the Krusty Krab, Mr. Krabs has him work off his debt. But that choice proves to be a fatal one for the restaurant. The starfish doesn't just royally mess up each task. When he tries shredding a bag containing money, he breaks the compactor, causing an explosion. Well, well, let's see how the poor boy's doing. Well, did you earn me money back yet, Patrick? <laughs> This moment of stupidity causes the destruction of the cash, the restaurant, and Mr. Krabs' patience. Ultimately, this entire episode shows how Patrick refuses to use basic logic, and it can get really frustrating. Almost done, Mr. Krabs! You've destroyed my refrigerator! <laughs> you destroyed many of the things I love! It also proves he isn't cut out for fast food. Eating it? Sure. But working in the industry? Eh, well, not so much. Number 12, taking part in National No SpongeBob Day. This isn't something a friend should ever do. In the episode titled Gone, SpongeBob discovers that the entire population of Bikini Bottom has vanished. Patrick! Open up! Squidward and Gary are missing! <laughs> Patrick's gone too. What if everybody's gone? Seeing the city turn into pretty much a ghost town worries him, and that's pretty understandable. But in a shocking twist, it's revealed that everyone actually left to celebrate National No SpongeBob Day. Everyone including Patrick. Oh, you too, Patrick? Yeah, everybody needs at least one day away from... <laughs> yeah, SpongeBob can be a lot, but this was a pretty messed up thing for anyone, especially the starfish to do. Hilariously though, the exact same situation then happens to Patrick when they celebrate No Patrick Day. Where do you see No Patrick Day? Come on everyone, let's go! <laughs> see how that feels, Pat? Yeah, it's not fun. Number 11, not getting SpongeBob proper medical care. After catching a disease known as suds, SpongeBob tries to go to the doctor for help. But before that happens, Patrick visits and proves to be a major hindrance. They make you read old magazines! Hey. Then the doctor pulls out his stethoscope! No! Yes! He scares SpongeBob out of getting proper treatment, which is bad enough on its own. To make matters worse, Patrick then tries curing the yellow sponge to truly disastrous effect. At this rate, I'll be cured in no time! In fact, I'm gonna call Sandy and tell her not to come. Thanks, Dr. Patrick! And they said I'd never make anything out of myself. Thankfully, Sandy is ultimately able to get SpongeBob proper care, but we go through so much unnecessary trouble and pain because of the Sea Star's idiocy. 
Patrick's ignorance shows that he's definitely not qualified to offer medical advice of any kind. Sure, SpongeBob! Say, uh... uh. He is not who we would call in case of an emergency. Also, really, Patrick? You're faking the suds now to get a lollipop? Number 10. Making SpongeBob's stage fright worse. SpongeBob's a nervous wreck about his oral report for boating school. No thanks to Squidward. So we asked Patrick to help him practice. How does Patrick help, you may ask? By constantly interrupting his speech, putting him through ridiculously over-the-top obstacles, and generally adding to SpongeBob's anxiety. Boating safety! <laughs> Come on, SquarePants! Is this the best you can do? On top of it, when it's time for the actual report, Patrick breaks the special goggles used to help with SpongeBob's stage fright. Here, let me blow them up for you. There you go. Hey, remember when Patrick used to actually try to be helpful for his friend? Clearly, this episode didn't, because his helpfulness amounts to hurting the poor yellow sponge. They're all staring. <laughs> Number nine, being a hypocrite. In this episode, Squiver gets a hold of SpongeBob's diary and reads it to the customers, including Patrick. Rather than stop the ordeal and defend his friend's privacy, however, Patrick joins in and starts teasing the absorbent fry cook. Yeah, cook me up a Krabby Patty with good old Fifi. <laughs> sure thing. But when SpongeBob starts crying, the entire town turns on Squiver and goes out of their way to antagonize him for his crime. Patrick joins in the hypocrisy by chewing out the cephalopod, even though he is far from innocent in this. Diary reader! What? You read it too? Oh, sure. Blame everyone but yourself. Reading someone's diary is wrong, but Patrick and the townsfolk have no right to sanctimoniously punish Squidward for their hypocrisy. Unless they actually apologize to SpongeBob off screen, which we really doubt happened. There he is! That diary reader! Let's get him! Number eight, going mad with power. It turns out that Patrick is of royal blood, and is possibly a king. So like any decent king, he totally abuses his power to tax the townsfolk for their valuables. Now my 40-year-old life and my comic book collection are complete! Mom's gonna be so proud of me! No, she won't be, because these comic books are mine! SpongeBob's too scared to call his best friend out on his tyranny. But thankfully, we have Squibbert for that. Stop! Patrick's no king! Look at him! How can this pink blob be king? We know Patrick has no idea how to be an actual ruler, so it makes sense that the power would go to his head. With great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> you haven't a clue what I just told you, do you? No. Still, his behavior is truly appalling. At least he sort of learns his lesson, though. It turns out that Gary is actually the true king, and he and Patrick are somewhat related. Ugh. Poor snail. Gary, you're royalty! Number 7. Being Ungrateful This Season 8 miniseries sees the main characters showing off their vacation slides, and Patrick is among them. Who knew being lazy could be so tiresome? I need a break from the hustle and bustle of my everyday life! I'm so exhausted! Help me, SpongeBob! Please help me! He can't afford a real vacation, so SpongeBob converts the rock into a resort to give his best friend a comfortable staycation. Your key, sir. And please don't hesitate to let us know if there's anything we can do to make your stay more comfortable. The little square dude jumps through hoops to make Patrick happy and safe. And how does Patrick show his appreciation? By running SpongeBob ragged, walking out on him, and taking over his bed. Patrick, what are you doing here? Oh, that resort next door is too crowded. And I found this place. It's... Quiet and peaceful. To top it all off, he never once says thank you for his poorest pal's effort. After all his hard work, SpongeBob could use an actual vacation, away from unappreciative friends. You have another nasty old dream? Mm-mm. Patrick in your bed again? Mm-hmm. Aye. Well, good night, man. Number six, making SpongeBob's splinter worse. SpongeBob gets a wicked splinter and desperately calls Dr. Patrick to fix it. Well, I'm pretty booked today. But I think I can fit you in. Rather than be of any actual help, Patrick self-righteously shames SpongeBob for questioning his methods, and then makes the splinter worse in the most graphic and gruesome way possible, before proceeding to just walk away. That doesn't look good. Yeah, but my shift is over. Yep, you heard that right. We can't quite get past the way he can just shrug off SpongeBob's dilemma, do whatever he wants at his best friend's expense, and not face consequences for his snobby blundering. Needless to say, Patrick's both very much not a doctor and a lousy friend. Call me in the morning, if you can still dial a phone. Number five, encouraging Sam's destructive temper. 
The fact that they retconned Patrick not having any siblings is already a bad start. What's my mom gonna say? Patrick. Oh my gosh, if my sister finds out- Patrick. Oh wait, I don't have a sister. His long lost big sister Sam comes to visit, and she's even more brutish than her brother. During her visit, Sam repeatedly harms Squidward and SpongeBob and dismantles their houses. <laughs> This is way beyond my property line. Squidward is rightfully furious while SpongeBob tries to play peacemaker, but Patrick scorns them for being mean to his sister. Sam only shows regret after accidentally hurting Patrick, but continuously harming the others is A-OK -okay in her book. While it's nice that Patrick has such a strong bond with his sister, what right has he to encourage her destructive behavior and ignore his friend's well-being? Now, don't you think, Patrick, that it's a teensy bit unfair that Sister Sam dismantled Squidward's house? No, I don't. Number four, turning against SpongeBob and embarrassing him. Believe it or not, even during SpongeBob's golden age, Patrick had his fair share of unlikable moments. His parents are coming over, and he's nervous that they think he's unintelligent. SpongeBob decides to act like a dummy to make his pink buddy look smart, and it initially seems to work. He means shake. No, SpongeBob, no! Shake hand! However, Patrick gets caught up in the act and starts rudely treating him like he really is dumb, even behind the scenes. Oh, SpongeBob, if only you could see how stupid you sound right now with your talk of imaginary plans. The family jeers and laughs at SpongeBob until he finally leaves in frustration. Later, it turns out that the visitors weren't even Patrick's real parents, meaning he humiliated his best friend for nothing. Oh, that's right, honey. We don't have a son. Oh, yeah. Number three, acting like a spoiled brat. Getting off to a bad start, Patrick mooches off a of SpongeBob to buy a kid's meal for them to share, and then eats the whole meal for himself. Are you gonna save some of that for me? What? Nothing. Plus, Mr. Krabs manufactures a Patty Pal toy for the two to share, except Patrick goes out of his way to keep the toy for himself. Hand it over, Patrick! I get to play with the Patty Pal today! You can't take it! It's not fair! The starfish has had some selfish tendencies before, but here, he's just a whiny baby who fusses and cries when he doesn't get his way. He even goes so far as to eat the toy, screaming, If I can't have it, no one can! Lesson learned. Never share anything with a pink brat. You'll literally pay the price for it. This time it's on me! Patrick, that's my money! Have you learned nothing about sharing? Number two, neglecting Gary. Our poorest protagonist is going out for the day and asks Patrick, his most responsible friend, to watch over Gary. What could possibly go wrong? And I'm trusting my best pal to watch carefully over Gary while I'm gone. You got it, he's safe with me! For starters, he eats Gary's food right in front of him, leaving the poor snail to starve. Afterwards, Patrick forcibly bathes the pet with a fire hose and flamethrower, just because, and also floods the pineapple. Oh, sheesh, Gary. If you wanted another bath, why didn't you just ask? We're not sure which is worse, Patrick harming his own blood relative without blinking, or the cop-out ending making everything all right again even though it's really not. In a just world, Gary would be taking care of himself, and Patrick would get the babysitter. Ah, reading Patrick a bedtime story, I see. Snail Tales, that's a good one. Snail Tales? I thought it was called Meow Meow Meow. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, everything. SpongeBob has been desperately trying to find a rare Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy trading card, and guess who ends up with it? Number 54! That's the best card there is! It sure does the job, all right. <laughs> SpongeBob is hell-bent on preserving the card, but Patrick keeps putting it and himself in danger. Then he makes a rather interesting comment. SpongeBob, you can't always expect my usual brand of stupidity. I like to mix it up. Keep you on your toes. This bizarre statement heavily implies that every dumb thing he does, including endangering himself, later ruining the card, and making SpongeBob cry, he does on purpose just for kicks. Go get your pants up in a square knot, SpongeBob. Though he does make amends with his yellow buddy for the whole card thing, the damage is done. 
This small remark paints a once lovable doofus as something of a sociopathic, selfish imbecile. No, I'll never have Mermaid Man card number 54, the special talking one! Aww, sure you will. What do you think was Patrick's worst moment? Let us know in the comments. Patrick Star, we need to talk. Just one more minute, I Go gotta... one more minute me, Mr. Man. Hey, I'm missing the coconut! Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.